Hi guys, my name is Dan, I'm a veterinarian, and today, proptosis of the dog eye, which means it's terrified, but the doggy eyeball has popped out of its socket. I will go over why this happens, what you need to do as a pet owner if you notice this happened to your doggy, and as a veterinarian, how I fix an eyeball like this. It's scary guys, but if we move quick and we have great veterinary care, the doggy's gonna feel better and it could possibly keep its sight. Today, I'm gonna talk about what I as a veterinarian do to fix it, but before I do that, let's talk about why it happens. It happens because some doggies have really big eyes and really shallow eye sockets. And there's not a lot of anatomy supporting the globe of the eye. If there's a lot of pressure, if there's trauma, anything that causes additional pressure behind the eye itself can pop that eye just gently out of the socket. Now a lot of times I see these cases, a dog falls or gets in a dog fight or gets really nervous and it's held too tight. Any of these things that cause additional pressure can cause the eye to pop out of its socket, which is terrifying for most pet owners. When you see this, go in right away. You shouldn't sit there and marvel at how terrifying it looks. You should just go in right away and get that eyeball checked out because the veterinarian is going to work very quickly. When you, the pet owner, rolls in and sees me, the veterinarian, I'm going to first tell you, take a deep breath. <sighs> it's scary, but take a deep breath. Next, I'm going to do a very quick physical exam to make sure the doggy is all right in general. You know, if we had some trauma or something happened that caused the eye to pop out, I want to make sure I'm not missing that as well. Once I'm like, good, yes, the dog looks great, then I will fix the eye. What I tend to do, what most veterinarians tend to do, will give some kind of sedative to allow us to work because the dog's uncomfortable. Next, we're going to fix the eye. The reason why it's so hard to get the eye back in sometimes is because edema or fluid collection happens around the eye. All those muscles that allow the eye to like look around guys and the conjunctiva, the pink stuff in the eye, that kind of that soft connective tissue, all that, when the eye kind of pops out, all of it just gets herniated out as well. And all of that sliding out and then it gets trapped by the eyelids. So the eyelids are like, oh my gosh, this is all supposed to be in the eye and now it's outside the eye. And it's acting as a kind of like a, a tourniquet, which doesn't allow, you know, adequate drainage of this tissue. So it just kind of holds it, it gets all edematous and it just gets worse and worse and worse as it sits there. So we're going to try to reduce it without doing surgery or anything too invasive. But if we can't, because there's too much edema, we will do something to correct the problem. So first, first thing we do is I tend to use a solution that has a high osmolarity. What that means is basically it could be like a fancy like sugar solution. And I put that in the eye and sometimes the, all those molecules in there in that solution helps to suck out the edema or the fluid in the connective tissue, the muscles, the conjunctiva of the eye. As it pulls it all out and it dries it out, the eye sometimes can just slide back in to where it should be in its socket. Now, that's like best case scenario. You feel like a rock star. You're like living on cloud nine. But a lot of times it doesn't work. What we'll do in most cases is we'll make a little cut to extend the eyelids. The problem is guys, when everything kind of herniates out, the eyelids trap everything. Uh, and then you have fluid collection and edema and it swells. And it's, it's like you're trying to push all this back in, but you have more than what you had before, right? Because it's all full of fluid. So you need a bigger eyelid. We'll extend the lateral canthus a little bit. And by extending it, that allows me to open the eyelid up bigger so I can push everything back in. Once everything's back in, we will moisturize the eye, we will medicate the eye, we'll check for an ulcer. We wanna make sure the eye is as healthy as possible. Now guys, once we're all done, we're gonna suture that eyelid closed so the eye can heal without having to be exposed to the outside world. It's gonna sit in the socket and everything is going to hopefully help it to normalize the edema to completely empty out. And if there's any trauma to the eye, give it time to heal. Once it's healed, in a couple to a few weeks, we will open that up and we'll look at the eye and make sure it's doing okay. I know the question everyone's asking now is, Dan, is that eye gonna be visual? Can my doggy still see? 
it depends on how much damage there is. If the eyeball, you know, pops out and it damages a whole bunch of the the uh, the muscles of the eye, or if it damages the optic nerve, you know, all these things play a big factor. Or if you get any bleeding or hemorrhage behind the eye or in the eye the eye itself, all of these will play a factor. Now, the only thing we can do, guys, is we can reduce the eye back into its socket. We can give meds for inflammation and prevent infection as well, but we just have to see if the eye is gonna recover for us once we get it reduced. That's why it's so important to get in soon. That way, if there is, you know, trauma and inflammation that is brewing and growing, hopefully we can help slow it down or reduce the severity of it by reducing the eye as quickly as possible. As always, guys, I hope this content was really helpful. I know Poptos eyeballs are incredibly scary. I know when a dog walks in, they still kind of shock me at first, but then I'm just super excited to fix them because there's nothing better than fixing an eye that hurts.